Hi guys, welcome to this video on using a recurrence relationship to analyze an, again, it's way too long. How much? I'm like 147, never going to remember these titles. Can we make the chapter titles a little bit shorter, you think? My name's Darren from Maths Guru. really lovely to see you. Thanks very much for watching the video, you and the three others in the world who are watching these. Uh, just to let me know you have watched it, can you do me a massive favor? Can you just subscribe to YouTube for me? I know it's, you know, it's very, a lot of effort for you, but if you can do it, it just, it actually means the world to me. Very sad and needy, I know. But it just lets me know that people are watching. And follow me on this brand new platform I've heard of, TikTok. Very interesting. Yes, uh, okay. And mathsguru.com, if you head over to there, free to sign up, and all the notes you see behind me are absolutely free to download. Now, what are we gonna deal with today? Well, I always do the learning objectives. We're gonna know how to express a geometric sequence as a recurrence relationship, how to read a recurrence relationship, and then how to generate a sequence using the recurrence relationship. And again, if you've been following my previous videos, you'll know that recurrence relationships and terms are really, really important, and they're quite different from each other. When you get to general maths next year, I can promise you that a lot of kids trip up with the idea of a rule and a recurrence relationship. Yes, a rule will allow you to find any number in a sequence. You don't have to go term to term to term. A recurrence relationship is how to describe that term to term to term in formal mathematics. Now, as I say here, in uh, the previous lesson, when we did an arithmetic sequence, we found that we could actually express the sequence as T0 equals 100. What did that mean? Well, T0, or it might be T1. In fact, that should probably be T1, but we'll get, we'll get carried away with that for the moment. That's my first term, that's the first number, all right? And then it says t of n plus one. What on earth does that t of n plus one mean? Well, I always read that as next term, all right? I read t of n as my current term. So effectively, this says t of n plus one. To get to my next term, I take my current term and add three. So realistically speaking, as we said before with our arithmetic sequences, that plus three was our common difference. So it meant, to get from term to term to term, I was going to add three. And in this situation, I was going to start with 100. Please don't forget the comma between these. It is important, all right? Don't be commaist. Not very happy. I say commaist, nothing else. All right. How do we do this for a geometric sequence? Well, believe it or not, in exactly the same way. We've always got to start with our first term. So in this situation, if we have the number sequences I've got there, 2, 6, and 18, well, let's work out what my first term is. My a is equal to 2. What is my common ratio? Well, take the 6 and divide it by the 2. That gives me 3. And we'll just check. Is 18 divided by 6, 3 as well? 6 by 80? It is. Good. So they're not trying to trick me. Now, if you remember, we always write down that t1, that's better. I must update this slide. I'll update it to make it t1 earlier. So T1 is my first term. It's always where we start in the sequence. In this situation, we do two, and don't forget the comma. It's important. We always write T of n plus one is equal to. Now, work it out. When we've got a geometric sequence, what do we do? We multiply each term, or the previous term, by the comma ratio. And in this situation, it's three. So we would be timesing by three. Oh, so I can either write t of n times three. Yes, that's certainly one way to write it. Or being more mathematical, we could probably write t1 equals two, comma, t of n plus one is equal to three times t of n. And in many cases, they may even just write that as three t n, right? And again, when you write these things, realize that there is a big difference between t m and t with a little n, right? So unfortunately, if you wrote it like that in an exam, you'd actually get it wrong. I know, it's so ludicrous, it's a joke to just, you know, quote one of my students at the moment, it's a joke, that is, it's a joke, all right? So, writing these things out is really important. There is a common format. So let's have an example, see what we, get, what we come up with. This video is not very long, by the way. A, generate and graph. Oh, we're gonna graph the first five terms. All right, so of a sequence of five iterations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna write term, and the table, and I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so I'm then gonna put my number. So what does it tell me here? T1 is five, well that's my first term. There we go, so T1 is five. T of n plus one is equal to two T of n. Two T of n, ah, 
that's a times by two rule. So to get from one rule to the next, I'm just timesing by two. So five times two is 10. 10 times two is 20. 20 times two is 40. 40 times two is 80. Now again, if I wanted to, I could fire up my calculator and let's just check we got that. Five is my first term. Answer times two, one, two, three, four. And there we go, I've got my right values. Now why is that gonna be helpful to me? because I also want to graph it, right? To be able to do this, I've got to go and do my table. So let's insert a list and spreadsheet. We'll do term here, we'll do number here. He says not being able to spell again. One, two, three, four, and five. And to save myself some time, I'm gonna go five, 10, 20, 40, and 80. And again, if you want to know how to do that quicker, there are lots of examples in my previous videos. If you are doing the class pad, your functionality is pretty similar. So I'm going to go data and statistics. I'm going to put term along the bottom. I'm going to put number up the side. And there we go. Now, why is it doing that? Because it's increasing. It's growing. When I times by two, we're making it bigger. And if, again, if you go back to the previous video, when your common ratio is bigger than one, it's always going to increase. And there we go. I've graphed it. Now, you can do that on a piece of graph paper in an exam hopefully relatively easily. Use a rule to calculate the value of the 10th term in the sequence. All right, so we now want a rule. And if you remember, my rule is given by T of M is equal to A times R to the power of M minus one. Don't know where that came from? Watch the video. Go to mathsguru.com, download the notes. If you need to, watch the video again. Download the notes, print them off, write all over them. Stuff that you're gonna remember and put them in your summary book. All right, what do we want? We want 10th terms. We want t of 10. Do I know what a is? I do. It's 5. Do I know what my common ratio is? I do. It's 2. And do I know what n minus 1 is? Well, n is 10, so n minus 1 is 9, he says, hoping that I've done that right in my head. Go back to my calculator, put this in here. So 5 times 2 to the power of 9. And you're going to probably turn around and say, well, why have you put those in brackets? habit really, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I really wanna make sure that the two is to the power of nine. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. So my answer there would be two, five, six, oh. A word of warning with these questions, a lot of people who do five times two to the power of nine, think that you multiply the five and the two together first. Now if you did that, you'd get 10 to the power of nine and that's gonna be a very, very, very wrong answer, all right? Whenever you do this stuff, you're always doing bid mass brackets, indices. So in that situation there, because the nine belongs only to the two, you would do that first. Here's an application question and it is the last slide of this particular video. The volume of a cube, or sorry, the volume of cube one is eight centimeters cubed. So that one there is eight centimeters cubed. Now as I write it on there, any useful information I write on. The volume of each successive cube is 1.5 times the volume of the previous cube. So to go from there to there, I'm gonna times by 1.5. Likewise, to go from there to there, I'm gonna times by 1.5. So what are they giving me in the question? Oh, all right, so I'm just gonna write that there. R is equal to 1.5. I haven't read the rest of the question yet, but I'm just extracting the information. And we know that A there is eight, my first volume. All right, let Vn be the volume in the centimeters cube of the nth cube of this sequence. A recurrence relationship, that gets me from term to term to term, that can be used to generate the volumes of this sequence of the cube is V1 equals eight. Yes, my first term is eight. V of n plus one is equal to 1.5 times V of n. Yes, we know that now. That's my multiplier, R times V of n. A, use the recurrence relationship to generate the volumes of the first four cubes. All right, so we've got eight, Let's fire up my calculator, and what have we got here? So we're gonna do eight in my brackets. I'm gonna do answer times 1.5, one, two, three. So there we go, there are my first four values. Eight is the first one, then we've got 12, 18, and 27. And use these volumes to construct a table showing the cube number and its volume. All right, so if I was now to put a line above here, he says, with not a lot of space, one, two, three, and four, that would be n, and that would be v of n, all right? So sorry I don't have a lot of room there, but hopefully you guys would have done this. Construct a table. Use the table to plot the volumes of the cube against cube number and comment on the form of the graph. Well, I'm actually gonna do this on my calculator. 
So let's go back to a previous table I've got. So we've got the numbers one, two, three, and four. I don't need those. And what numbers I've got here, we've got eight, 12, 18, and 27. And hopefully when I go back here, it's going to give me my graph. So menu, I'm gonna zoom to just my data. And there we go. Now I know that looks linear, but actually it isn't, all right? There is actually a bit of a curve there. We've gotta be very, very careful with these type of things. So you would be given graph paper to be able to sketch that on and comment on the form of the graph. Well, it is non-linear and increasing. So for part B, I'd probably write non-linear and increasing, all right? Because that's really all we know. Part C, use the rule for the nth term of the sequence to predict the volume of the 10th cube. Again, the 10th cube, what is it with the 10th cube? Well, what do we know? We know that T of M is equal to A times R to the N minus one. You're gonna turn and say, why do you keep writing the formula? Because A, if you were in my class, I'd give marks for writing that. B, muscle memory. So we want T to the 10, A. What was my first term? Ah, oh, I've already got it over here, thank you very much. My A value is eight times R, which is 1.5 to the power of n minus one. n is 10 minus one, which gives me nine. And lo and behold, I can go back to my calculator, put this in, what have we got? Eight times 1.5 to the power of nine. Hit enter, and what do we have here? Use the rule for the, predict the volume of the 10th cube of this sequence. So what do we got here? So 307.547. I'm actually gonna write that to two decimal places. Now again, normally we would tell you, it's strange that this question hasn't. So in this situation, I'm gonna write 307.55, and don't forget the units. They told you the units in the question, all right? So it would be there, centimeters and cube, because we're dealing with volume. Believe it or not, there we go. That is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. If it has, leave me a comment on YouTube. Subscribe, turn off notifications if you need to. It really does mean the world to me when you subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. Go to mathsguru.com. The list is endless. Otherwise, hopefully, I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys, please, and stay safe. Bye-bye.